Well, hello there and welcome to another advanced listening practice lesson. You can see I am topless and I am actually bottomless. So I'm not going to show you that though. Uh, so it is I, Drew Badger, the co-founder of EnglishAnyone.com and the world's number one English fluency guide. And it's kind of hard to see. I couldn't really get a great angle on this. Uh, but I'm in one of my favorite places in Japan. This is a uh, hot spring bath, so natural, uh, lovely water coming up here. I'll get a little bit of video so you can see what the actual place I'm in uh, looks like. But anyway, this is me, and this is my first uh, topless video, so I hope you're enjoying it. Um, but for this advanced listening practice lesson, like always, uh, I'm going to be speaking a bit more quickly, so hopefully you catch everything I'm saying. If you're new to the channel, I highly recommend you go back and watch uh, the previous videos in the series, uh, or at least the other videos on the channel, so that way you can get a better appreciation for how I speak. Otherwise, uh, this may be a little bit too quick for you. Anyway, uh, let's get into the lesson, because it's, uh, it's getting a little bit hot in here, so I do like to relax in the bath. but. Uh, I want to get this show on the road. This is a really great native uh, natural English phrase you can learn uh, or you can use. To get something on the road means to make it hurry and to speed it up and actually get it started. So anyway, let's begin. Well, this is uh, actually I've uh, been a little bit kind of late on getting the new lesson set out uh, or the new lesson in this series. You know, my mom is in town right now, so we actually happen to be on vacation uh, kind of going to a, a little bit of a hot spring resort, kind of a hotel. This is a traditional uh, Japanese inn called Ryokan. Uh And so this is one of my favorite places. This is actually why I came to Japan. I wanted to learn more about gardening and to, to learn about the culture out here. Uh, so actually I worked at a Ryokan and it started, you know, it was one of those things that I was kind of interested in. I figured I would tell you a little bit more about my story in the environment where I, I really, you know, this is kind of the thing that really brought me to Japan. Now again, it's kind of hard to see. I got maybe two trees behind me, but this is a rock bath that I'm in. It's a uh, natural hot spring bath, uh, but the, uh, the facility I'm in, it's actually something that's man-made. So there are quite a few places that you can go to where you can get a, uh, an experience of something natural. You can actually go outside in a typical hot spring bath. You can get inside mud and that kind of thing, or sand. Uh, so I love that about Japan. There's a lot of uh, volcanic activity, so volcanoes and things that produce a lot of um, great warm water, like what I've got right here. So anyway, I just figured I would tell you, you know, this is kind of why I came to Japan, and this is one of the things I really like to impress upon you as you're learning English. So whenever I'm talking to my personal learners about how to get fluent, I always talk to them about how you can be thinking about the final product first, such that you can work backwards from that, and that's how you know you can really get fluent. So whatever that thing happens to be, that part of the culture. Uh, that language becomes the bridge to that thing. So in my case, the reason I came to Japan and wanted to study Japanese gardening, uh, it's you know just something I've been interested in for a really long time, so I decided to come out and really wanted to learn it in Japan from a real Japanese teacher, and that's how uh, the person I found to help me accomplish that. Uh, but my goal wasn't to learn the language. The language was a means to learning the actual thing I wanted to learn, which was gardening. Now, I like the uh, actual Japanese language, uh, it's a lot of fun to learn, and it's a quite different language from English, uh, and I speak it quite well. If I do say so myself, I'm happy to say. Uh, but one of the reasons that, uh, again, I was able to get fluent in Japanese is not because I was trying to study the language in a school uh, or because I drilled a whole bunch of things. It was because I was learning the language as a result of having you know, gotten into some activity, something that I was really interested in learning. And really, the only way I could get to do it well is by learning the language. So you can see I'm actually getting a little bit sweaty over here. Yeah, it's actually a, a pretty nice, uh, it's actually quite hot though, um, but uh, kind of a shame you can't join me over here anyway. But just the same, uh, just for this quick video, uh, because I'm a little bit late, I've already been getting messages from people saying, hey, we got the last video up to 10,000 views, where's the next video? So here it is, I'm actually taking time out of my vacation to record this for you because I love teaching and, you know, obviously, uh, you know, getting to show my naked, you know, body or whatever, but, you know, you won't see too much again. But just I thought it would be a great opportunity for you to get to see uh, part of my world and part of what uh, drew me to Japan. And so, again, I'll show uh, a couple of scenes about this. But really, the number one thing I'd like to impress upon you with this video is to think about language as a means of communication such that you can do whatever it is you want to do. And the less you focus on the language and the more you focus on the thing you're interested in, the faster you're going to get fluent. So that's the thing. Unless you really just like studying, you know, languages, you're like a uh, person that just enjoys studying languages or you want to learn lots of different languages, 
it's going to be much more difficult for you to just study the language in itself. So always think about the language as a means to accomplishing something else, and then I will see you in the next video. Like always, as soon as this gets to 10,000 views, uh, again, I apologize for having the previous one get up to about 13, 14,000 views before I release this one, but again, I'm on vacation. My mom is here to see uh, my new daughter, uh, and we'll probably feature, here, uh, feature her in another video again as well, but I hope you've enjoyed this video. Uh, if you're new to the channel, please subscribe, like this video, and if you have any questions or you want to talk about the other things you're interested in, the reasons why you're learning English, not because of the language, but the reason that you're going to use the language or uh, the place you'll use the language or whatever your real goal for learning the language is, especially if you're not, again, just somebody that enjoys learning languages. Well, I'm going to turn it off now, uh, and I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Again, as soon as this gets to 10,000 views, I'll release the next one, hopefully right after that. Again, I apologize if I was a little bit late for that, uh, but that's life. Anyway, uh, so again, be uh, sure to like the channel and subscribe to the channel. And if you'd like to learn more about how you can get fluent and actually be doing things in English, I highly recommend you check out Master English Conversation. You can click on the link in this video uh, or in the description below this video if you'd like to learn more about that. That's actually how we take people, you know, in kind of situations like this. We get people talking about how we can use the language and in situations where we use the language in real life, that kind of thing, as opposed to sitting in a classroom and trying to teach you, you know, rules and things like that. So if you're uh, interested in that, do click on the video uh, in the description below this video or in this video, and I will see you next time. Bye-bye.